1,500 meters or a mile on the Earth's surface. One of the centerpieces at the Energy Discovery Center is a ride down what is billed as the world's largest drill bit. The journey is a primer on the oil and gas business, just a few hundred feet from the Leduc No. 1 well site. We lived in a tar paper shack for the first year, but then my dad got a promotion to driller. Hmm? That's the original well right there. Right here? Yep. That's amazing. On this spot in 1947, an oil boom was ushered in like no other Alberta had ever seen. A boom that would transform the province from an agriculture-based economy to Canada's petrol power. Oh, it got it started. Uh, I mean, without Leduc, uh, there would have been some, some other place. It might have been Redwater or Drayton Valley, but Leduc just happened to be the one. And You know, within six months, there was probably 30 rigs running around here. People didn't realize they were uh, making history because we were all working, getting a paycheck. Dan Claypool was just 16 years old when he left his job on the farm to start what would be a 46-year-long career in the patch, a career that included managing an offshore rig near Scotland. In the fall of 49, uh, it started to snow, so we couldn't thrash anymore, and of course, no work, no pay. So my cousin and I had a little radio and we heard about this discovery up at Leduc, and uh, we took her summer's wages and bought a 1940 two-door car in Nanton and headed north to seek our fortune. The plaque at the site says, near here on February 13, 1947, Imperial Oil took a real gamble inviting over 500 business people and government officials on a bitterly cold day to watch the well blow in. Actually, my dad and, and all the crew, they were worried about their jobs. You know, how many more dry holes is Imperial Oil going to drill? They had drilled 133. Uh, my dad only drilled about 15 of them. Don's father, Vern Dryhole Hunter, crisscrossed the West with his family in tow. It was a nomadic life chasing potential finds. The rig moved by train in those days. So I remember the train coming in with all these skid shacks on, and it looked like the circus came to town. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I thought, oh, the circus is in town. <laughs> the crew had no way of knowing that the next hole they'd drill would be the one that would change everything. Seismic testing showed a hump in the Leduc field. What they didn't know was whether there was any oil. We figured, oh, it's just another dry hole, you know, so we'll be, where are we going to next? That was always the thing. You're always thinking, where are you going to next? And a lot of times you didn't know till maybe a week or two before you moved. After drilling 5,000 feet beneath the frozen farmland, tests showed this wasn't going to be another dry hole. A big public relations event was planned for 10 days later, when the well blew in with what the Herald described as, quote, somewhat spectacular fashion, snorting and puffing with great bursts of gas and watery oil. Alberta's second oil boom had kicked off, the first 33 years earlier being the Turner Valley find. When Leduc came in, I arrived 18 months later and there was already 100 rigs looking for additional uh, reserves, not only here, but red water, and we're going to uh, Drayton Valley and all over the province. So you can see that's when the second industry came about, but it was built from starting in 1914 in Turner Valley. Back at Leduc number one, Vern Hunter's crew weren't entirely sure what they were dealing with. So actually, when, when they hit oil here, we were, we were still worried that Maybe it, uh, it's just a one whole wonder. You know, maybe you move over here a mile and over there a half a mile, there's nothing. By year's end, the Leduc field had grown to 33 wells. 28 were producers. Only then did 12-year-old Don Hunter know how big a find this was. It didn't really sink in till, you, till we moved to Devon and got in a house with running water. <laughs> then we knew. <laughs> then we knew we had it made. <laughs> Last night, the wild oil well in the Leduc Fields, 20 miles south of Edmonton, caught fire. 
The rest of the world would learn about the Leduc field a year and a half later in spectacular fashion, when Atlantic number three blew out and later caught fire. You know, Atlantic over here caught fire and, uh, you know, blew wild for six months. And, and that was on the newsreels around the world. And uh, that was kind of exciting, too. <laughs> Some blame Calgary businessman Frank McMahon for using outdated equipment and cutting corners. Despite blowing out, an ocean of oil sputtered and spewed onto a farmer's field for months on end. 10 to 12,000 barrels a day were collected and piped away. Onlookers traveled from miles around just to have a peek. They tried everything to stem the flow of oil inside the well, including sawdust, ping pong balls and chicken feathers. At one point, more than 10,000 sacks of cement were poured down the hole, to no avail. They think a, a rock hit a piece of steel in the derrick and caused a spark. And I'm sure that's what it was because it didn't explode. It just kind of caught fire. Six months after the well blew out, the derrick crumbled. Don Hunter was on the road watching with his mother when Atlantic Number 3 caught fire. Well, what was your, what well, it wasn't thinking? an explosion, right? Because we couldn't really tell. Somebody said, "Look, look, there's a fire," and what? It started in the middle of the sump where most of the oil was bubbling up, and and just spread. Then, uh, holy Moses, a fire truck and everybody come howling out of Devon, and <laughs> within three days, the massive column of flame and smoke would be extinguished. But images of that blaze would make international newsreels for months. Atlantic number three really put Alberta on the map as an oil producing province. In the decade that followed Leduc number one, oil exploration pumped $2.1 billion into the provincial coffers. Hundreds of new companies formed. Thousands of new jobs were created along with bright futures for countless Alberta families. I just have one brother <coughs> and he was born eight months and three weeks after Leduc number one. <laughs> I don't know, it, it must have been a fairly exciting time. <laughs> we hope you found your trip both enjoyable and educational. We have now reached the end of our journey, but there is more to see. Near Leduc, with files from Tony Seskis, Rick Donkers, CalgaryHerald.com.